Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News in the headlines. Dominica among the top seven richest countries in the Caribbean. A five-star resort project here could help save the Stone League tradition and a pledge to investigate allegations against the NCCU as the institution faces public scrutiny. The details coming up. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fenced pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. First stop in the news, tourism authorities intend on investing renewed focus in culture tourism as tourism and culture are under the same ministerial portfolio. Tourism and Culture Minister Senator Robert Tong says the twinning of tourism and culture coupled with Hurricane Maria's impact has caused his department to look at new ways of marketing the destination. This now presents us with the ideal opportunity to develop our potential in cultural tourism. Dominica's rich and diverse culture, its food, its dance, its music, its dress and festivals make the island a, pos a prospective hotspot for tourists wishing to explore arts, heritage and, and the special character of the nature island. As we recover from the devastating impact of Hurricane Maria, we have found new and creative ways to market our island and to increase its appeal to tourists other than the nature lover or the thrill seeker. Tong said he was interested in getting ideas from stakeholders to hone a cultural tourism product. Fortunately for us, the World Creole Music Festival, the Jazz and Creole Festival, Mass Dominique, Dom Festa, as well as the various village festivals that form our entertainment and cultural calendar of events, provide us with a template for showcasing the island's rich culture as we, can already, as we have already began to build a solid foundation. The Ministry of Tourism and Culture will, in the coming months, look to engage stakeholders as we to determine the best approaches for increasing Dominica's visibility and viability as a cultural tourism destination of choice. In more news now, the National Cooperative Credit Union has promised to create a special committee to investigate allegations surrounding the institution. In recent times, allegations towards the NCCU surfaced on social and digital media. President of the Board of Directors of the NCCU, Josephine Dublin, revealed that some of the matters are already before the court and says while the situation is worrying, members should use due process to express their concerns and dissatisfaction with certain matters. Some of the matters in the allegations include matters that are with the courts and the board that you have elected will lead and advise you responsibly to allow the courts to follow its due process. The issue of the governance of NCCU Cardas Lipso has been reported to you at our last AGM and matters are progressing to ensure improved oversight of its activities. Other allegations, reloan concessions, COPEF, and any other matters that you may wish to raise may require some investigation. And if the meeting so wishes, it could formally inform, possibly by a resolution, the Supervisory and Compliance Committee of its intention. Dublin stressed that the NCCU will not stifle members' queries or participate in any cover-up. She did warn, however, that if the intention behind the queries is malicious, the board will support such action. If person or persons who are aggrieved would like the society to function efficiently, the proper procedures would have to be followed. If the intention, though, is simply to malign, to raise unnecessary dust, or to discredit the institution, we, your elected representatives, will be no party to this. The current board is making every attempt to ensure <coughs> that the National Cooperative Credit Union lives up to its mandate of providing financial services to all its members using cooperative principles. 
I wish to advise that at the board level, we have agreed that we are going to set up a special committee that would investigate those allegations. A soon-to-be five-star resort in the north of the island is helping to sustain a disappearing tradition in Dominica. Here is Andrea Louis with more. The scale of decorative masonry has dwindled over the years as a lack of interest by youth has led to the craft dying out with the older folks. A few years ago, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skirts organized a short course in which young people could learn the art of stonework. One of the graduates of this course pursued this line of interest and apart from starting his own business, has been hired by Range Development to incorporate this craft into its architecture. Charles Pond, stone contractor on the Kempinski Resort, says utilizing this skill on the hotel is a good blend of local tradition and modern design. He says a good percentage of the main building will be covered in this artwork. That, that's the main building itself. Yeah, probably like 75% of it that would be covered with stonework. Um, right now, I'm um, seeing that they extend on the workload that they gave me and there's some of the other buildings because they, they, they like it a lot. They like the work, they like the way it's going on, you know, they like the look of it. And they like the natural look of the stone itself. Yeah, so um, they extend and give me some other works that have to be done on, the, on another building also. They're trying to put a little piece of the local um, craft, uh, well, like it's, it's, it's a craft, because stone is a craft. Trying to put a little, 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 little piece of the craft on the hotel itself. So um, that's the reason, that's one of the main reasons, and Talisha is a nice, is a nice one. The stones used on this project are obtained from the Makushri River, which Pond says gives the best product for this project. The only challenge is getting guys to collect the stones on because the stones now, you cannot just take a machine and go by the river and just dig up stones and put on a thing. You must collect the stones. So we get our stones at the Makushri River. Yeah, to, be, to tell the truth, I believe this river have the the nicest set of stones, as you can see the colors that we use in the pink, um, some of them come out orange, some is gray, you know, some is purple. Pond explained the process of preparing the stones once obtained from the Makushri River. The first order of business is to break the stones in half. From breaking the stones half half, we um, the stone masons, we develop, um, bring the stones to the stone mason. The only thing the stone mason have to do with the stones now is um, break it down to um, four inches by breaking out the back and bring it down to four inches because we use um, the wall itself is six inches in width. Um, the, mortars, the mortar behind these stones has to be two inches yeah, and the stone itself is four inches so that making up the, 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 the six inches wall. What we do use um, when it comes to our mortar, the, the way we mix our mortar, it's not like, like mixing for blocks. We use um, three, pairs of sand, three pairs of sand to a uh, a pair of um, to a, a bag of cement just to make the um, mix mixture a little bit rich, you know. Yeah. So um, as I as I say, like they, 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 they always say that um, the stone wall is always stronger than the block. Currently, there are two stone masons working on the Kempinski Resort. Andrea Louis, Channel Five News. DBS Radio's late engineer Kurt Matthew was fatally struck by a moving bus as he was heading to his vehicle in November of 2017. At the time of his death, Kurt Matthew was being celebrated for his work in restoring the station's coverage following Hurricane Maria. He was called a hero for his work in helping to restore communications following the hurricane. His mother did not wish to come on camera, but speaking to her on Friday, Channel 5 News discovered some disturbing information that some might deem unfortunate. She calls it awful. Mrs. Lebrun says since her son's death, the police have visited her four times seeking statements. On one occasion, she says, they came requesting the clothes that he wore on the night he died. Lebrun says eight months on, she has no knowledge of any arrests being made or charges filed against any individual in connection with her son's death. Lebrun says to date, she has not met or seen the driver of the vehicle the night her son's life was taken and no one has come to see her to say they are sorry. Mrs. Lebrun says she was, however, visited by the driver's relatives about a week after the tragic event. Eight months after Kurt's death, his grieving mother says she has not even as much as obtained her late son's death certificate. This creates a number of other difficulties for her and her late son's children, 
which he did not wish to make public at this time. You are watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, the parent of a 10-year-old road accident victim and the issue of road safety. Thank you for staying with us. Dominica is the seventh richest country in the Caribbean in terms of GDP per capita. According to worldatlas.com, Dominica is ranked number seven among the 23 countries with a GDP per capita of 14,300. Above that, at number six, is St. Kitts and Nevis with a GDP per capita of 16,300. St. Kitts and Nevis is preceded by Panama at number five with a GDP per capita of 16,500. In fourth place is Antigua and Barbuda with a GDP per capita of 18,400. Barbados is number two and Trinidad and Tobago number three with GDP per capita of 25,100 and 20,300 respectively. The Bahamas is the richest Caribbean country with a GDP per capita of 32,000. Haiti is last on the list at number 23 with a GDP per capita of 1,300. The largest credit union in Dominica is reporting a good financial showing for the past year despite Hurricane Maria. The National Cooperative Credit Union, NCCU, which comprises seven branches, held its annual general meeting on Thursday under the theme, Building Resilience, Our Members, Our Priority. President of the Board of Directors, Joseph in Dublin, says the performance, while good, was affected by the passage of Hurricane Maria. 2017 was projected to be a very good year for the NCCU, but God had other designs. We all know what happened. Hurricane Maria struck. Could you imagine that by August of 2017, the society had already registered a surplus of over $4 million? It was provident, though, that we had performed so well because with the onset of Maria, you know what happened. And all we can already amass would be a surplus at the end of 2017 of $2.8 million. Dublin says the credit union's loan portfolio also did extremely well, despite having lower figures than the previous year. Income on loans was 27,872, 20, $27 million. And this is a reduction compared to the previous year, where it was 29, almost $30 million. While this is a decrease, just to show the strong position that we were in before Hurricane Maria, you will see that at that time, in August, our um, income from loans was 20, 000, 20 million, which was an increase over the similar period the year before of some 19 million. The current membership of the NCCU stands at 46,000, which is mainly due to an injection of 1,473 from the Southeast Cooperative Credit Union, which joined the amalgamation in January 2017. And Secretary-Treasurer of the Waterfront and Allied Workers Union, Wau Curtis Augustus, is hoping government considers holding pre-budget consultations much earlier going forward. Last Thursday, Cabinet held discussions with civil society leading up to the national budget presentation in July. Augusta said Wau's submission at that forum was the same as 2017, considering none got implemented by government in that financial year. I did, in fact, uh, submit that 48 hours notice was insufficient to have a really informed presentation because I would like to um, get the input of other members of the executive uh, in terms of making that submission. But since we had only 48 hours, I decided to use the opportunity based on what was done last year to um, re-emphasize the areas that we would like coverage on uh, in the budget for 2019. And we are hoping that some of our submissions will be taken into consideration and we would see it reflected in the budget of 2019. 
and 18, 2019. You said you had to resubmit your proposal, your 2017 proposal? Yes, uh, we indicated very clearly that we had, and uh, the letter would indicate uh, that irrespective of the fact that we didn't get the invitation at the time, we made the submission. And um, I think this is going to be our form of operation. We are not going to wait um, again to be invited, but we would invite ourselves to make the submissions that we think should be covered in the budget of government on an annual basis. Augusta says one of its recommendations last year to have a WAU delegation at the International Labour Organization meeting in Geneva got the commitment of the Prime Minister. We uh, made mention of the fact that since Dominica became independent in 1978, we never had the opportunity to participate in the ILO meetings in Geneva. And uh, we felt that it was time. And I must say that the Prime Minister, on being told that in uh, 2017, uh, made a categorical statement to us that in 2018 we would be going. But of course, Maria had uh, different plans. And we didn't push it because of that particular fact. Uh, but um, we just decided to remind him of this uh, so that in 2019, if all goes well, we will have a full delegation at the ILO meeting in Geneva. Augusta says an early date for budget consultations will mean that recommendations can be included in the budget over the same year. It is usual that um, they do take into consideration the submission and where they can incorporate it that they do. And that is why I felt that um, a consultative process of this kind, if held earlier, because uh, our submission in 2017 was in June. And of course, you know that um, the budget is usually uh, presented either late June or early July. So we are saying that if we have the opportunity to make that sort of representation uh, earlier in the year, um, that that could really make it possible for it to be incorporated or some of what we have said to be incorporated in the budget. But if we have it late, then the budget is almost complete already, so it will be difficult. And probably what will happen is that it will be taken into consideration in the following year. The father of 10-year-old Natalie Matthew of Bath Estate, who died in a vehicular accident on the main road there in June or on June 6, says he's concerned that more is not being done to curb speed on that highway. Ronald Matthew believes other pedestrians may be in danger if measures are not put in place to ensure safer driving speeds on that highway. His 10-year-old daughter died when a vehicle ran into her as she tried to cross the street. Matthew told Channel 5 News while his daughter's remains have already been buried, he's not aware that anyone has been arrested or charged in connection with her death. We've been told by the police that investigations are continuing. On the day of the accident, the 21-year-old driver, Giovanni Garraway of Cochran, was attacked by residents and suffered a broken nose and other injury. He was hospitalized and discharged. Mr. Matthew, who is recovering from a stroke, says his wife had been given a court date, but he had no in further information beyond that. Some members of the public have expressed concern that such cases appear to drag on for too long before anyone is arrested or charged. Segments of the public have also opined that the frequency of these accidents have not led to any substantive changes in laws or drivers' behavior in the country. Natalie Matthew, a grade 5 student of the Roseau Primary School, has been described by the school principal as well-behaved and lovable. And to end the news, we take a look again at the headlines. Dominica among top seven richest countries in the Caribbean. A five-star resort project here could help save the stone-laying tradition and a pledge to investigate allegations against the NCCU as that institution faces public scrutiny. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. It's weekend, everyone. Do have a good one.